Hello everyone and welcome to snapityourself.com. My name is Connie Ray and today's tutorial is going to be these gorgeous little note cards and a box and some envelopes to put them into. Really quite easy to do but there's a little bit of fiddling around that you have to do but they're certainly worth it. Really cute and here's the box and I've changed um, part of the box up a bit um, but basically it's a little box that you're going to put six envelopes, sorry, six cards in and six envelopes. And yeah, two plus six, yeah. Uh, and these are the little envelopes that I've made. And I've just chopped off the top of the envelopes. So they're more like a um, seed packet, I suppose you could say. And they're just slot, slotting. Oops, sorry, let me just get the camera back out of it. Okay. Um, basically, they're just slotting to the little um, pocket like this. So when you're giving it to somebody, it, it just looks really pretty. This is done in vellum and we're using embossing folder today. So I've got six little note cards, six little envelopes and a box to show you. So we've got a bit to do and some embossing. So we've got a bit to do today, um, but we'll get through it. And so forgive me if I'm rambling because you know I always ramble. Welcome to the new subscribers and hello to the old subscribers. And thank you very much for joining. Um, stand for yourself. I hope you're enjoying the tutorials. I'm enjoying doing them. It does take a little bit of a time, but I am enjoying doing them. Anyway, enough said. So today's project, we are going to use this stamp set, and this is called Birthday Blooms. This um, has been around for a while. You've probably seen pictures of this one on um, YouTube quite a lot because it is a stunning flower, beautiful flower. But we're going to be using this little flower here. The little tiny one there there we go this one so i'm going to be using that to do to create a little flowers i'm going to be using for you and i'm going to be using dear friend but of course you can put any sentiment you like out of whatever stamp set that you have entirely up to you these little note cards are just a nice little gift to give somebody and you know how you always just one little card to put with a present these ones are really good so I do hope you enjoy this project and we'll get on with it so first things first with um, my flower I have stamped it in basic black and I have used my Copic markers um, I like my Copic markers for these particular um, colouring tutorials because the Copic marker are alcohol based and they do not rub or tear the paper. So, but you can colour it with whatever you have, entirely up to you. I have used um, the Copic Y21, that's the actual pen that I've used, and it's yellow basically. And you get these little flowers that I have previously coloured and cut. So that's them there. And you can see like the detail on them. There we go. They're quite lovely. So um, I've coloured with the yellow and I've coloured in the, with um, a green. And I would fussy cut all of them because there's no dye with this one, but I've cut them all out to use them. A little bit of fiddling around, but it's certainly worth it. So basically you're stamping and you're colouring in and you're cutting out your little flower. That's the first thing that you're doing. And then you put that aside to dry it. After we've done that, the next thing that, uh, the first thing I did with the cards was I, st I am stamped and embossed. And I used the copper, a new copper, um, embossing powder, which is really lovely. I'm trying to get it to work on other things that I'm doing, but I'm not having much luck with my my other designs that I'm working on, but I'm getting there. It's just one of those days, I think. All right, so um, what I would suggest is you embossed your cards. For, okay, let's take a step back. I do apologise. Okay, we do want to emboss the cards and then put them aside. But before you emboss the cards, the card base size is six inches in landscape mode. And it is three inches in width and you score it at three inches so it's a little note card it's tiny 
but it's cute. It's appropriate when you've just got a, a gift to give somebody for birthday and you've just given them a gift or you've just given them a card or, you know, or a thank you, whatever you want to use them for. They're basically just note cards and you can do whatever you like with them. So basically that's the first part. So cutting your card and getting your card ready is quite simple. The next part was for embossing. So I have used my Versamark to stamp on my cards. And I have used the For You sentiment. And For You covers quite a lot of um, situations, doesn't it? You've got birthdays and thank yous and, you know, you're just addressing one particular person. So really, it's um, For You covers quite a lot of purposes to actually give a card to somebody for. So ultimately, it's quite a good cover. So I have just quickly stamped those with my stamp and we're going to use the copper embossing powder now you will see a lot of people who do this they've got these containers with the spoon and the you know um still waiting on a really good design of handling embossing powder okay so we sprinkle it over the top and we just tip it back in and ultimately and hopefully it has been grabbed so We'll do that for all three. Try not to let your um, ink go dry. And if you are doing a big, um, a big embossing session on one particular card, don't forget to use your um, embossing buddy because it does your your hands leave oil, and the embossing powder will stick to anything. Um, and you don't want to leave little bits and pieces all over your designs and your present for someone. So I'll just turn my heat gun on because it's best to use it when it's hot. I'll just quickly check my embossing up close to make sure that there's nothing on there that I don't want to be embossed. And again, if you use your embossing buddy, you'll, you'll cover a multitude of sins and making sure it's clean. Bit of a flick and a kick. <laughs> On my embossing gun, I'm just going to put a little bit more on this one because I think I missed a little section here. There we go. So get your embossing gun nice and hot, and then we just do some quick embossing. I think I just wrecked that one, but that's okay. If it's wrecked, it's wrecked. You'll see ultimately what it will do. So we're just going to emboss here. Good. Sorry, I'm just grabbing my mouse because it's fading out. Okay, here we go. So you should be able to see that turn, hopefully. There we go. I love it when it turns. It's so much fun. Okay, so that's basically it. Looks kind of good, doesn't it? So we're going to just do all of your cards like that. It's funny, isn't it, how you just, um, it just looks really boring and blank. And then when you emboss, it just looks so professional and pretty. I love embossing. I think it just gives that final gorgeous touch on everything. There we go. There's another one for you. And then the one that I wrecked, which I stuck my finger on, I think. But that's okay. You can see that it's happened. You know what happens when you stick your finger in the way. This is what happens when you stick your finger in the way. Half your words go missing. Oh, it's not doing too bad for you. There you go. And it's missed the little squirrely bit where I put my finger on it. So not to worry. That's all right. You basically get the idea. Okay, so they've all been embossed. Now, the reason that I wanted to show you that was the next part that you get is your card might be a little bit curly, which is quite normal. If you do that after you've cut your cards and you've got them prepared, emboss as you have done, and then stick these under a book, something heavy, the whole six of them, and it will flatten them back out to the right shape because sometimes the heat does get a bit messy. So basically that's what we're doing with those. 
stick him under a thick book or a heavy item so that they get their shape back. Now, I think the next best thing would be to do the box so that you can see um, how the box is made. Um, when it comes to boxes, there's hundreds of boxes on on uh, YouTube and tutorials and Pinterest and you know really like a box is a box is a box and there's lots of different ways that you can get a box and dress it up and they all look really similar but um, I will give you this box that I've used for this set of cards and you can do with it as you wish I have changed it a little bit in terms of my dressing up and that's really what we're doing we're dressing up a little box aren't we all right, so basically you need a piece of black. I've used black in this instance. You can use whatever color you want. You need a piece of um, black cardstock measuring eight inches by seven and a quarter. Seven and, oh, gosh, silly me. Not very good today. Okay, seven and a quarter, which is there. And we're going to just cut that oh wrecking the place that's okay all right so if you want to use um, your trimmer you could do that too so we're doing eight by seven and a quarter And that is the amount of paper that we'll be using. Oh, sorry, cardstock. Cardstock. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of scoring. Really easy, this card, this box. It's so easy and it's got so many ways you can use it. Um, so uh, what are we doing? We are scoring at uh, the longer side. It's eight, shorter side. Okay, the longer side we are scoring at two. And we are scoring at four inches in the length. And then in width, we are scoring at two. And we are scoring at five and a quarter. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is to go up at the two inch mark. Just make a little indentation just up there where the two inch mark is. If you like, I can zoom in a little bit, I'm sure. So we just want to make a little indentation here. Oh, see how close I can get. There we go. Just there. Little two, two in, at the two inch mark. And here the same. Just a little mark. That's all you need to do. Because what we're going to do is we're going to trim that box down. It's going to give us a nice edge. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's very easy. So basically... If we go back to our um, trimmer. Sorry, I'm just bringing this out now so you can see what I'm doing. And we are going to, I'm just waiting for, oh, the camera, isn't it? <laughs> I was waiting for the camera to not be so unclear, but it's quite good now. Okay, so we're going to get the two inch mark that we've made here. Just going to pop it on to the track so that we can cut it. And we're going to line it up with the top score line that we've made so basically you're just going to put a point that's going to be trimmed and it's going to look like this that's what it's going to look like and we're just going to trim off that piece that corner so you've got your score little score mark here your indentation at number two that we made at two inches and you've got your score line here where we made the longer score and so we're just going to go and cut that off just like that so you've got a little dent, that, that indentation there. And it's the same on the other side. Same all the way with this one. Okay. So we've got it there. Don't want to make any dramatic mistakes, which I do do. <laughs> Not very good with measuring sometimes. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so we're going to cut down on that one as well. And you're going to end up with that shape. And from here on out, it's pretty straightforward in the sense of the box. Okay, so we've got that shape. We're now going to, just looking for my, my bone folder. Now we're going to score and burnish those lines, as they say. 
quite an easy box to do. Okay, so I've burnished my lines. So my box is kind of looking like it's going to come together. Let me just, sorry, I'm just going to move out so you can see what I'm doing. So basically my box is going to end up looking like this, like a little holder. Um, but first, I just want to do some embossing on the front panel. So to make that easy, um, first time I actually made it, this box, I actually stamped it the wrong way. So I want the front of my box to have this embossing on it and a little bit of um, embellishments so that it holds my cards and my envelopes. Um, and what I'm trying to say is be careful with you when you stamp your um, sentiment on, make sure it's facing the front way. So this is the front of your box. So you probably better stop doing that. So you've got your box on the back, turn it over, flip it up and you're going to be embossing and make sure that you, you're embossing if you're going to do it this way is fine you can it's facing you so I think I was using uh, dear friend yes I did use dear friend but if you if you're not sure about it um, go do the stamping the other way so I'm just going to get my Versamark back out Versamark is really good because it is very sticky and it grabs your embossing powder quite well. So basically I'm just going to stamp on here, dear friend. Now if you make sure your sentiment is up the right way when you're doing this. So remembering that this is the front panel of the box. So I'm just going to pop that kind of there. Yep, that looks good. I don't know if it's straight, but it looks good. And then the next um, sentiment that I used on the, what do we do with the flowers? Oh, silly girl. Oh, here we go. Okay, with um, the more embossing, I used the little heart border that comes in this set as well. And I put that on the front. So we're going to use that as well. And we're just going to put some Versamark on there. And again, we're just going to pop it onto the front of the card. Don't worry if it goes over a bit because you're not going to see that. It's just going to be folded down. There we go. Not necessarily straight, but this is a tutorial. It doesn't have to be. Well, I like them to be perfect because I'm very fussy, but I get a bit nervous when I record. So... I make lots of mistakes so the next thing we want to do is just emboss that um, stamping that we've done so I'm just going to put some more embossing copper I do love this color it is beautiful and again don't forget to use your embossing buddy if you're um, which I should be doing but I keep forgetting so I do apologize but it is good to use because it just cleans that paper up for you ready to emboss on and stamp. Okay. So there's, you can see it, hasn't been um, heat gunned yet, but it's there. Okay. So just want to make sure. I hate that grittiness that I get from it. Oh, fussy, fussy. Um, Just want to make sure it's all clean because I didn't use my embossing body. I was naughty. But anyway, all good. You get the gist of it all. So I'm going to just quickly um, emboss this. And then I'll just put this like this so you can see it when it embosses. Very hard to see until it embosses. Once it embosses, it's lovely. There we go. That's all happening now. Look at that. I love it. I love it. it. Looks good, doesn't it? So nice. It's so professional. I love embossing. Okay, as you can see, if you don't use the embossing buddy, you will get 
little specks like I've got. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's little specks there that shouldn't be there. And if you use your embossing buddy, you can avoid that happening. So lesson learned, and I'll probably make the same mistake again. Okay, so that is actually the front of your box. What we're going to do now is just quickly cut it. So we're cutting the first, um, what do you call it, first line I suppose, cutting into the indent on both. Okay, my glasses, I need to get my eyes checked I think. Time for an eye check and um, just take a little tiny corner trim out. You probably see people do this all the time. It is worth it because it does make it tidier. And a little trim off that one. Turn it around, do exactly the same on the opposite side. I do love this little project, it's so cute. And if you need any of the products that I'm using today, you can just go up into the right hand corner and click on my Stampin, your Stampin, Stampin Up link and you can go straight into the shop and you can purchase any of these products that I'm using in the tutorial. You don't have to join up, you can join up if you want to. Um, that's entirely up to you. I do it because I'm a hobbyist and I get a discount on my products, which is always good, isn't it? Because you always want something. Um, and the other thing is that there is a um, special one at the moment you can earn coupons to actually spend in August on any uh, $90 you spend. I think it's $90. Don't quote me on that, but go in and have a look and it will tell you. Oh, it may not tell you just yet, but I'll put the information in my blog. So please don't um, uh, hesitate to go and have a look at the blog at stampityourself.com and the links will be down the bottom. Um, go in and have a look at them and um, just see what the specials are. I know that if you spend a certain amount of money, you will get a coupon to spend or redeem in August. And um, that's always a bonus, isn't it? You <laughs> can't complain about that. So always good to have a few dollars in your pocket, especially when you're buying crafting stuff. My Lord, I get a little bit carried away there. All right, so basically we are going to join the box up like this. So basically I'm just going to put some adhesive. I'm going to use Tombow because everybody who watches me so far knows that I like my Tombow because it just holds everything for me. But you don't have to use it. You can use your sticky strip or you can use um, your um, adhesive runner, this one. Tie that to you. I use, depends what I'm doing. And we're just going to bring that corner up, up into the square to make sure it's nice and neat and solid and bound so it won't come undone on you. It's the same with this one. Okay, and then we're going to bring this one up and we're going to seal that one. And you might as well just use a, um, yep, you could. Okay. Because they're not really heavy cards. The little note cards are quite light. But it's nice just to have it sitting on your desk or have it there whenever you need it. And there you go. There's the box. Now, you you can, if you want, put designer series paper on the front of this and on the back of it. With my first one, I did put some of the um, vellum, which is what I've made the envelopes out of. Um, and I've embossed the vellum and popped it on the back. You can do that if you like, or you can put some designer series paper. I actually like this one the way that it is. I'm not sure if I like this anymore, but that's me. I change my mind quite frequently about these things. So um, if you like it, use it. If you don't, put in something that you will like. But ultimately, you've got the embossing there with the copper on the back, and it looks really nice like that. So basically, you're going to be doing your cards in there. And we're going to be doing the envelopes and we're going to pop the envelopes in there as well. And then you've got this gorgeous little gift that you can give people. So, or you can have sitting on your desk and someone says, have you got a card? That way you have got one. 
Okay, so the next step that we're going to do in this tutorial is to go to the cards. So the ones that you've got sitting under the book, we will grab them out now. Oh, knock everything over. We'll grab those ones out that you've got sitting under the book and the ones that we've previously embossed. Okay, so we've got those. They're very easy to put together, especially if you've already previously cut and coloured. And I often find that cutting and colouring, I do... Um, when my husband's watching TV because it drives me insane the things he watches that's the truth <laughs> but um, usually I do it sitting down or sometimes I just have a colouring in session which I really really like I like the adult colouring in sessions yeah the adult colouring in books I love those books I love colouring in and with stamping up especially with um, uh, this flower here this one here oh Every time I colour it in, it looks different and better look. See, I've been colouring in and it just looks gorgeous. It's just got such a beautiful hue on it. And so you can see I've been cutting out and colouring in. It's like adult colouring. You don't need colouring in books when you've got stamping up products. You can just sit and colour all day. So, yeah, you can do. Mm, love it, love it. Okay, so basically I put these cards together, as you can see, exactly like this the only difference uh, I haven't glued these what I've done is I have used a uh, dimensional and with the dimensional I put that behind the flower behind the flowers the back of the head of the flower just to give it a bit of height oh, that didn't work very well did I flicked it right off So it's one of those things that we're going to come off. Oh, come on. There we go. So you're centering it just in the middle of your card. Something like that anyway. Wherever you want it, really. And it does look a little bit better than just gluing it flat. There. I'm going to have lots of these. Someone says, if you've got a card, I'm going to have plenty. Because you've got to do the tutorial ones, and then you've got to make the one that you're making to show the tutorial. So you end up doing quite a few. There you go. Aren't they bored? Oh, they're pretty, aren't they? They are so pretty. So you can do that. And then I have used my um, burlap ribbon, which is this one here. And I've cut, I think I cut about two inches off. And then I got the two inches, and I cut it in half. And then... I basically, um, I did use the sticky strip to go over it and stick it down, just over, there we go. I liked it just over the actual stem, just on a bit of a slant to give it another point of interest. That one's probably, I would probably go a bit shorter with them. you can do whatever length you like you can use you don't have to use burlap unless you want to but if you wanted to it looks I like the burlap stick that down just gives it another point of interest and it just looks like it's got little you can use Tombow glue for this as well I think some of the other ones I did stick down with Tombow um, but just for the sake of not having to hold you up forever in a day because I know your time is valuable there we go. So basically we've stuck some, some of that down and it just looks like a, that is a little bit long for me. I think I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. It's a little bit too long. And yep, that's a bit better. That one's fine. And this one's a little bit long as well. So I'm just going to trim those off. There we go. So that's how you put the note cards together because you've done a lot of the prep work previously before getting to this point. So it's just really just putting them together after you've done your embossing. And of course, once you've sucked them on the book, they become flat again. So that's all good and done. 
And so we have now got our box and we have got our note cards. And what else have we got? We have got to do the envelopes now. So we've got our note cards and the envelopes. I have done something very different with these envelopes. I have used my envelope punch board and I have previously embossed and prepared them, all with the exception of one, just so that I can show you. I've prepared some of them, let's put it that way. So I've used the um, embossing folder, um, which is Elegant Dots, and it comes up with this gorgeous um, embossed texture. It's lovely, isn't it? And I used this on, um, sorry, what am I trying to say? I used it for, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Isn't that terrible? Oh, sorry. I've made it, I've done it on the vellum. So this is the vellum that I've actually done it on. So you've got these little vellum envelopes with these elegant bossing embossed dots on it. So I've used the embossing folder and I've run it through the machine to do that. And the size of the paper or the vellum that you're going to use, because your cards are three by three, you're going to be using your envelope punch board and three by three is going to be five piece of um, vellum which is five and a quarter by five and a quarter and I've already gone ahead and I've embossed it um, I popped it into the embossing folder run it through the big shot and this is the, the, the texture that comes out with it so um, I'll go ahead and show you how you do this on the envelope punch board if you haven't used one before and this is for the people who haven't used one before because there's always something new going on isn't there so this is you go up to your card size and you look at the card size and it says three by three so it's three inches by three inches and then it says well the paper size that you need is going to be five and a quarter by five and a quarter so that's why we've got this size and then the score line that we're going to be using is going to be two and five eighths so we take this edge up to two and five eighths and it clearly says there two and five eighths you probably can't see it here but if you have one of these you will be able to see it and what we're going to do and two at, five, at two and five eighths is we're going to punch and we're going to make the lip of the envelope and we're going to go down the score line and start to make the envelope you then line up this little let me just there's nothing worse when you can't see someone's trying to teach you something so you've got your score line here so you line up the nib which is here you line that up by putting the paper back up and you line that up this little nib here on the previous score line that you've made you'll also find that it goes to two and five eighths anyway so it's not rocket science punch and score so you do that on all four sides so I'll just quickly do that because I have previously done this. Done. Now, the other side of this is that you want to make those little edges on your envelope. You want to make them round because at the moment they're square. You can have them square though if you want to. Entirely up to you. And you do that with this side. You go down and just punch. And it's just like any corner rounder. Did I say that right? Yes, any corner around it will work. Whether it's this one or one that you've got, doesn't matter. They all work the same. And there you go. So we have now an envelope. So we're going to just make this as um, get your um, score lines and just burnish them quite well because didn't get you up, because it is um, the vellum is quite tough it's a good quality one and it's actually quite tough to um, stick down you can see how it's coming along and turning into a little envelope but what I decided to do is turn it into a pocket rather than an envelope you can have an envelope if you choose but I decided I'll show you what the envelope looks like let me just zoom out so that you can actually see what I'm talking about okay so this was one of the ones that I have done and it goes into the little pocket like that. So you've got this cute little note card that looks like that underneath your embossed pocket. And that's what's going into the 
box that we're making. But if you wanted to use an envelope, you would definitely, let me just score that off, look like this. Whoop, I haven't lined that up very well. There we go. So basically, it would look like this once I've glued it down. And I decided that I didn't want it to look like a little envelope. But if you like it, you can have it looking like that. It's entirely up to you. So that's what your little envelope would look like. Let me turn it round so that you can see it in the correct format that I had it in. There we go. So if you've got your little envelope, it looks like that as well. And you've got the normal envelope style. But I didn't. I decided just to do the little pockets and I'll show you how I did that. It's very simple. I just cut it off. <laughs> very easy. So basically, before I went and punched and uh, scored everything, I just basically lined it up and I trimmed it off with my trimmer. That's all I did. It's pretty self-explanatory because you can see it. So you'll see here, for example, you can't see it, but the score line, I'm just going to line it up on my trimmer and I'm just going to cut it off. And they're all going to be looking exactly the same. So when you see it down, it's just like a little seed pocket. I think it's just different. And I think it just creates a point of interest, which is really nice for the recipient. There you go. Okay, so with all of those chopped off, we will stick them down. I think uh, for these ones I used the um, glue dots and because it is tough this stuff, tough stuff. Uh, where am I? So I would put one here. Yeah. I'd put a few because it can be a little bit tough, this vellum. If you wanted to use paper, of course, you could use paper. Even if you want to use white cardstock, you could still use white cardstock and emboss it and still have it looking exactly the same. So if you haven't got any vellum, just bring that over and stick it down on both sides. There's your little pocket. And there's your little card to pop into it. If you wanted to do it like that, of course. But if you didn't want to do it like that, you could... Um, sorry. I'm doing two things at once and my brain doesn't work like that. Okay, so you want to probably store these in the back and your cards in the front, just like that. That's what I was trying to say. So you're going to store them in like that until you're ready to give it to the recipient. And then you can just pop it into the uh, packet, into the envelope. I probably will put about five or six, three on each side of this, just to make sure it stays down because it's quite a heavy. Vellum, as I've said before. So 
so to save you sitting here watching me glue the wall I will just continue to do that so basically you're just doing that with the six of your little envelopes putting the glue dots on sticking them down put three on it three glue dots on each side of the envelope and then stick it down and you can store it in there like that You've got your, whoop, your six envelopes. You, actually, you can put more in here than six if you wanted to. It keeps catching on the, the back of it because it's not glued down. Uh, yep. Let me do that. Okay. So the vellum is quite thick. So you can put six in here, but if you wanted to, you could put more. It's entirely up to you. See how many you could squeeze in there. Three. Three, 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 and what do I do with all my other ones that made? Oh, there they are. Four, five, six. See, I can get quite a few in there. There's seven. Whoa. Eight. Nine. So I wonder if you could get nine in nine of these in the en envelopes in the back. You probably would be able to. Um, and I put some diamantes on, um, well, sorry, some rhinestones. I keep calling them the diamantes, and they're not diamantes, they're rhinestones. I'm just going to stick this little guy on, just for a little bit of added. Should have done that, but anyway, not on that part anyway. A little bit of added prettiness as such. And there you have it. Like I said, I didn't put that in the back on the tutorial, but you could put that in the back. Your measurements for that would be uh, four um, inches in landscape by three inches in width for a designer series paper to go in there. So you can do that if you wanted to, but I decided to leave it out because I really liked just the color and the black and the white together, just like that. And a couple of um, rhinestones, I think, are necessary. I'm gonna put them on this side to balance up that that design there. Oh, I'm gonna put a little one right here. Oop, sorry, wrong one. Oop, there we go. And voila, there you go. So that is the tutorial. For these gorgeous little note cards and of course you can put anything on these you don't necessarily have to put um for you but for you does cover things like birthdays thank you and all that so you don't have to go to the worry about putting a sentiment in on the inside i would put a piece of white paper if that is what you would like in there personally i tend to like the um white um this is uh the white marker and I like to write it myself on the black. I just think it looks nice, but that's entirely up to you. So don't mind my school, didn't look too good, did it? But anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for joining me. Sorry, I did go a little bit over and because um, I have been rushing and I've been trying to get this one loaded up because I've, I've actually had this one completed for a couple of days now. So I do apologize for waffling on and taking up your precious time but I do hope you enjoyed the tutorial please subscribe if you wish to go and purchase anything as I said you just go into the um, link up the top go to my blog and see the details and I will list the specifications for all of this that you've done I've done tonight which is quite a bit really um, and also the designer series paper sizes for the, the corners um, which I will write up on um, the blog as well so all the instructions will be there and also join me on Facebook and you'll see that I have got um, a group, well not so much a group, but there's um, people on there that I actually, um, my blog links to there, so any messages you want to send me. So thank you very much for joining me, thanks for your patience and I look forward to having another tutorial for you to enjoy um, shortly. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for the new subscribers. Cheers, take care.